Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Pieros, Pieros Cherotich. I am super excited. Having been with this opportunity for the last 13 years, I've been able to learn a lot. I've been able to grow as a person. And I've been able to, uh, I mean, grow my, my skills in uh, doing the business. So I'm excited. Before this opportunity, I was a high school teacher. I was a teacher of physics and mathematics. And I only knew how to teach, but today I know how to do so many things because this is a business that is going to really uh, change your mindset, change your life and change everything about you. And seated with me is my husband. We do the business together and he's going to come in later. And I want to say this to all because I believe on this call, we are all members of the International Superstars team and also uh, Team Blessing in the US. We are so excited to have you. And now tonight we are, we are going to be learning a few things about the business. Now you realize our business is, uh, we say that there are, there are three basics that is using the product and sharing the products and sharing the opportunity and also training. Now, without training, the rest are null and void. You cannot be able to do anything, including even using the products because you need to know even how to use the products that uh, we are talking about. So we have a wide variety of products and therefore we need to train constantly. Imagine I've been training for the last 13 years and I've, we've never ever missed training because we know the importance. You become a better person, you know? You come in and even if it is a presentation, you learn again until you perfect the art. You can also do like the speaker. So I am excited tonight because you've come for this training and I know we are going to learn a lot of things. Now, I don't know how many of us have been able to read the book that is uh, titled GoPro, the professional way of doing the business because this business where we found it when we joined the business, people were doing it not in a professional manner. They were just looking for uh, salespeople. But today we have taken it a notch higher. And that is why we are very successful in the business. We want to do it professionally. We also want to grow a business that is going to be consistently growing up, not coming down. And for you to get a solid business, you have to be uh, able to train. So we have so many things that you need to learn, but imagine it is only narrowed down to seven skills, seven skills that you need to know in this business. And I believe if you are old enough, maybe a year and above in the business, you should be knowing uh, that uh, the seven, what the seven skills are. But if you are new in the business, then you are in the right place. Because tonight we are learning one of the skills, which is actually the basic skill. So the first skill in network marketing is the prospecting skill, the art of prospecting. How do you get people to, to even just listen to you or to be able to invite them? How do you create a rapport with people? This is so important, such an important skill because it's the first one. So tonight we are looking at the prospecting skill. Number two, we also have um, you know, the inviting skill, the skill of getting someone to a meeting. Join, getting someone to join our Zoom meeting, you know, or even just to meet physically with the person to be able to do the presentation. So we have prospecting, then we have inviting. The third one is presenting. How do you present the business to people? There's, these are skills that are so important for you to be able to master at the end of the day. And that is why you need to take training very seriously. I tell people when you join this business, Forget about the money first, learn the skills. Once you learn the skills, you go out and apply the skills. I can guarantee that money will come. But you see, there are people who will say, you know, I've gotten people in the, in the recent past who come and say, no, I, I just want to make money. They don't even want to come for training unless you perfect those skills. My goodness, you cannot be able to succeed in the business. So the first one is prospecting. The second one is inviting. The third one is presenting. The fourth one is follow-up, you know? Closing and follow-up is very, very important. The, um, you know, we also have starting the distributor right, you know? And then we have promoting events. And those are the seven key steps in the business that you need to follow to be able to be successful and make sure that you grow a duplicatable business, a business whereby your downline can be able to pick it up very fast. 
And this is where these skills will come up with a system for you. How is the system going? How is your system from right from prospecting? And so tonight we are super excited because we are learning the first skill. We normally follow them up. So if you attend this training, make sure you attend the other one when we will be talking about inviting people. So I'll be sharing with us about prospecting. What is prospecting? Of course, you know, prospecting is the art of getting people to be interested in what you're doing. You know, you have to get people to be interested. Yeah. And it is involving so many things. And of course, just to be interested to attend a Zoom meeting, of course, in the now we are talking about even inviting people, you know, through a phone call and also making them maybe watch something that you want them to see, maybe a video, you know? And you see what in our business, and I know most of us where you are, uh, you may not be enriched with that other person. Or when you meet somebody, how do you prospect them one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Or you just give them a call. Those are some of the very, very important things that you need to understand. How do you do it? And so tonight we are looking at how do you prospect? And of course we have prospecting of the markets, you know, the warm market and even the cold market. The warm market are people that you are, you are familiar with, you know each other, you know, they know you, they've seen you before. Maybe you don't even talk so much, but they know you. So these are the warm markets, maybe your colleagues, your family members, you know, those are the warm markets. You want to see how can you prospect these people to come into your business? Some of them are also doing better in life than you. How do you prospect them or how do you bring them to the business? So you can write down the, what I will be sharing with you. Um, we are also going to look at how you prospect what? People who are strangers, the cold market. These are strangers, total strangers. When you meet somebody for the first time, they are strangers to you. What do you tell them? Okay. So I know um, you realize that even as a new distributor or a new person in the business, um, it is a skill for you to be able to get someone to be interested in what you're doing, okay? So in network marketing, people, you find there are so many people who resist in the beginning, but you have to have this skill so that you can be able to counteract that resistance, okay? So I will share with us a way of doing it, and especially whether you are um, meeting someone in person or also uh, talking to them on the phone, because you can call someone on the phone. And one of the skills in, the pros in prospecting, there are things that you need. There are eight steps or eight processes that I will be sharing with you to be able to make someone to be curious about what you're doing and really come to, to look at it. Yes, so um, of course we have what we call the third party tools. The third party tools are things like a DVD, a CD, a magazine, a website, or even a YouTube. You know, you share a YouTube link that people can watch. You have a DVD, you have a CD, you have a magazine, or you have a website. You can share your own website. I hope everyone on this call is well versed with their website you know, your website, how do you share, okay? So you can invite people, and in fact, it is very good for when you are talking to a new person or even on the phone or someone who is a distance away from you, or even when you meet, before they come to the actual event or actual meeting, they should have watched something. Now for the International Superstars team, we have a prospecting script. I don't know how many of us have the prospecting script. The video that we were able to create for me and Josphat, and this one fits everyone because in the video, we are saying that you need to, uh, you know, when you share with the person, yes, it is Josphat and I speaking, but remember at the end of what we are talking about, we say that get back to the person who sent you this video for more information. So you realize that if you send the four minute video to somebody and they watch and now they start asking questions or there are objections, you know, those kind of things, you realize this is someone who is interested in the business. 
and it will really help you to even see the people, you know, to qualify your prospects. If someone does not do anything about it at all, that is not a prospect at all, because maybe they looked at it and they, they just felt like they can't, they can't, they, do, they are not interested. So that is very important. So when you are using third party tools like those ones, or, you know, there are some things that you need to know, you know, you need to really master these eight steps in prospecting. Can you imagine there are eight steps even in just prospecting, but they are so simple. And the first one is the first step is that you always have to be in a hurry. Hello? That is the first step, dear superstars. You have to be in a hurry. If you appear to be someone who is just dilly darling, they don't know where they are going, they have all the time in the world, nobody will be interested in you. So the first step when you are prospecting somebody, like even if you meet someone on the street, uh, and you seem like you're not going anywhere. You can, you are even escorting them. You're going, if they were going to a supermarket, you enter in a supermarket with them. In the process of talking to them, please, nobody will be interested in you. So there is a psychological issue. People are more attracted to a person who is busy and has things to do. So you will always have to show like you're busy. You meet someone, you are prospecting them on the road, even if it is on the street or someone who was your classmate, don't appear to like have all the time. So uh, if you start every call or even face-to-face -face conversation with the feeling that you're in a hurry, you find these people will, uh, you'll find your invitation will be short. There will be less questions and people will respect you. Remember, during prospecting, you are not sharing the opportunity with the person. So you see, if you have all the time, you will be pushed, you know, you will be forced to now tell all the information, including presenting what is new life and everything. No, prospecting is just getting to know the person and getting them to be interested in what you're doing, okay? So if you are in a hurry when you are prospecting somebody, you, you've just created curiosity for them to ask you, you know, for them to do the next thing that you want them to do, like watch the video video or come to the presentation. So if you, uh, if you are in a hurry, then you make the invitation very short. There'll be less questions and people will respect you and your time much more. So even next time you will realize that they will keep time if they are going to meet you or something like that. So there are so many scripts that you use to show this other person that you are in a hurry. Like for example, if you are on the phone or even meeting them on the road, for the warm market, that is people who know you or people you know, you can say something like this. I don't have a lot of time to talk, but it was really important I reach you. You know, you are talking on the phone. I don't have a lot of time to talk, but it was really important I reached to you. You know, that already shows that you, are, you, are, you, you have very limited time. And of course, this person realizes, oh, I'm that important that even when they don't have time, they are able to call me. Are we together? Yes. So for one market, you can ask them something like that. I have a million things to do to going on, but I'm glad I caught you. You know, you are showing like you have so many things to do, but you created some time to get reached out to this person. I'm running out of the door, but I need to talk to you really quick. Imagine if you started a conversation like that. Hello, engineer Muga. I'm running out of the door, but I need to talk to you really quick. Obviously, you realize Pierros is really in a hurry. So being in a hurry is very, very important. But for people who are called market, you know, those people, you, the strangers. So you can tell them now it's not the time to get into this and I have to go back. You know, you just met this person. You've just introduced yourself. But like, you like, now it's not the time to get into this and I have to go back. You know, now back you can continue that this person will realize you're, you're not just um, having all the time in the world. I am, I have to run, but you know, those kind of things. So you set the tone with some agency, okay? So that is very important. That's the first thing, step, be in a hurry. Number two, compliment the prospect. Tell them something good and you have to be very genuine in this case. 
You know, if you met somebody and you know, like me, when I, I meet like a lady and I see they have a very nice handbag, I'll just say, hi, I love your handbag. Where can I get one like that? They'll tell me, go to such and such a place. Or let me give you the number of that person. Even if they gave me the number of that person, they'll also give me their own number, okay? So give them a genuine uh, compliment. It is very critical. Nobody likes, uh, I mean, everybody just loves compliments, you know? If someone told you your skin is very smart, your hair is great, your earrings are great, you know, your, your suit is very nice, your tie is nice, you always feel good. And you know, you want to listen to that person more because they started with what? A compliment. So be in a hurry, but you also compliment, okay? So this one opens the door to real communication and uh, will make the prospect to be much more agreeable to hearing what you have to say. So please compliment the prospect, okay? And you can also use other ways of complimenting. Like for example, if you know them, like the warm market, it's someone you know and they are so successful. So you can tell them you've been widely successful and I've always respected the way you've done business. You've always been so supportive of me and I appreciate that so much. They will listen to you now when you start telling them to come on board, are we together? So we need to compliment the prospect. It is so important. Compliment the prospect. You are one of the most connected people I know and I've always admired that. You know, that is a compliment. Before you even start any conversation about your business or anything, you are one of the, uh, you, you are the most, or one of the most important people in my life and I really trust your instincts. You know, this person would want to know what next. You're creating curiosity by complimenting because you're telling them you're, I'm a very important person. They'll feel like the way you take them, you hold them so high. You have an amazing mind for business and I can see things other people, you can see things other people don't see. They see like, oh, so they've noted that I see things other people don't see, okay? You, I was thinking who are the sharpest people I know and I thought of you. That is a compliment. You are one of the most positive and energetic people I've ever met. So you can imagine complimenting the prospect, okay? Um, so there's also um, the cold market. I mean, the, the strangers now. If a stranger had given you a service, you know, like for example, you are you are a tourist somewhere, you've gone there, you've stayed in a hotel for some time, they give you, gave you a good service. Please compliment them. Show them they did well by giving you a good service. So you can tell them you've given me some of the best service I've ever received. So in case you want to tell them something about your business later, they will really, it will be agreeable for them. You are super sharp. Can I ask you what you do for a living? Something like that. You've made my stay a fantastic experience, you know? So, but remember the key to complimenting is what? Being sincere, be very honest. Always find something you can compliment about somebody. And I think it should just be a way of life. Then the third step. So the first one, I mean, the, the one we've just discussed was, the first one was being in a hurry, then compliment. Then number three, now you can make an invitation. After you give the compliments, you can make an invitation. And this invitation can be direct or indirect. But majorly what works is really the indirect invitation. Some direct invitations may, may vary and they may not even work, but some can work. Like for example, if you tell somebody when you're inviting them, uh, I found a way to get rich and let me tell you about it, blah, blah, blah. You know, I found a way to get rich and let me tell you about it. You see, this person will look at you like, are you rich in the first place? So this can only be used if the other people, if you are really a millionaire or something like that. Yeah, they will be excited to get such, um, such uh, info from someone who is above them. So the direct uh, we have for the warm market, for example, if um, in the warm market, you can always um, make the invitation like this. You ask somebody, when you told me you needed a, a, a new job or you needed uh, to lose weight, were you serious or you were just kidding? And you wait for the answer. 
They say, you shut up and wait for the answer. So when you told me you needed a, an opportunity or when you told me you, the money you are earning is not enough, you told me you wanted to change your, you know, your job. Were you serious or were you just kidding? And it has to be they ever told you something like that. So then you tell them if they say yes, if they say yes, you say, great, I think I've found a way for you to get it or solve the problem or make, make that happen. So these are for situations where you know an area of their dissatisfaction. So you've already identified their need. Then you can also ask them, I think I found a way for us to really boost our cash flow. You know, our cash flow. I found something you really need to see. You know, those are some of the examples. I'm launching a new business and I really want you to, tell, to, look, to take a look at it, okay? When I thought of the people who could make an absolute fortune with a business I found, I thought of you. So this person would be like, oh, so they are thinking about me, okay? So those are some of the ways you can approach your warm market, uh, invite your warm market. Like for example, you can also call them. If for example, I'm in Nairobi and on Saturday we have a meeting in Kisumu. We have a meeting in Kericho and, and the other person is in Kericho, I would say, I've teamed up with a company that is opening or expanding in Kericho in your area. So come and look at it, you know, something like that, you invite them now. So this is so important. And those are some of the examples that you can use on the warm market. But for the cold market, you see now you don't know them. So you can even just ask them, have you ever thought of diversifying your income? That is a very good question. Do you keep your career options open? Do you plan on doing what you are doing for now for the rest of your life? You know, if you follow this kind of script of inviting a cold market person, I'm telling you it would be very easy for you to prospect. So those are some of the scripts that are direct, but we have the indirect ones whereby you can ask, I've just started a new business and I'm scared to death. Before I get going, I need to practice on someone friendly. Would you mind if I practiced on you? That is a question that is not direct. You know, you are not like showing the, you want them to come, but indeed you want them to come, but you're just showing them they're important for them to be involved in what you are doing, okay? You can also ask them, I'm thinking about getting started with a business I can run from my home. Would you help me check it out and see if it is for real? You know, they feel like you really trust them. This is the warm market. So you really trust them. You want them to check for you whether it is a real business. And so this is a way of getting to the warm market. Or even I found a business I'm really excited about, but what do I, what do I know? You have so much experience. Would you look at it for me if I made it easy? If, it, if I made it easy and let me know if you think I'm making the right move. So they are thinking now you are consulting them. Okay? So there are those people who are like uh, skeptical. You can ask them, I've started a business and really need someone to help me poke holes in it. See whether it is a genuine business. Nothing gets past you. Would you be willing to examine it for me? This person will be like, oh, so they know that I only go for genuine things. So this is a way that you can be able to approach them, okay? And uh, so let us go out there and really start prospecting, inviting. Uh, so that is um, when you are inviting somebody. And if uh, these warm markets, like they are, like these are people, maybe your family members, you know, they are super skeptical or you know even they don't want such kind of thing. You can ask them, uh, the business I'm, I'm doing isn't for you, but I wanted to ask, who do you know that is ambitious? So ask them whether they know somebody else who is ambitious, money motivated, and would be excited about the idea of adding more cash flow to their lives. So you are asking like third party, whether they know anyone, so if they know anyone, they will always want to know which business then. What is that you are doing that you want to show someone that I know? So they want to understand first before they give out to somebody else. So in the process, they will realize it is uh, theirs for their taking. Okay? 
then you can also ask, who do you know that might be looking for a strong business they could run from their home? Who do you know that has hit a wall with their business and might be looking for a way to diversify their income? Do you know any sharp people who live in Kericho? Yes, great. Could I get their name and email address if you have it? I have a business expanding in that area and I want to see if they think it will be successful there. So those are some of the things you can ask somebody. Those are very, very indirect. And in this indirect, they will discover, oh, first I want to understand before, um, before I invite them. So that is a way of inviting. Then we have step number four. Step number four is, uh, it's a statement that says, if I dash, would you dash? If I gave you a DVD, if I gave you a YouTube link, would you watch? This is where now you are inviting them to be able to watch or to look at the, the third party tool that you gave them. If I invited you for a physical meeting, would you come? That is now where you are. You are inviting somebody to an event. And I have this and that. For example, you have in Nairobi, we do meetings on Wednesday and Saturday and Monday. So you ask them, you only give them two options. Would you, if I, if I invited you for a meet, a physical meeting in town, would you, would you be able to attend on Wednesday or on Saturday? So this is where you are going to offer like a third party tool or you are inviting them or, and they will have to agree to do something in return. So for example, if you gave a DVD that laid out the information in a very professional way, would you watch it? If I gave you a DVD, would you watch it? If I gave you a CD, would you watch it? If, you, if I gave you a YouTube look, link, would you, which has a, some script, would you watch? Would you, if I gave you a magazine, would you read it? Like that. If I, would you? So that is a step. Now you have come from being in a hurry, you know, complimenting the person and inviting them. And now ask them if, because they accepted. So if I gave you a YouTube video, a four minute video, you know, our superstars, international superstars team script is a four minute video. So if I gave you a four minute video, would you watch? Okay. So if the answer is yes, now you go to step five. You get a time commitment. So if they say yes to if I would you, then you do what you get a time commitment. When do you think you will have watched the video? Okay. So when do you think you could have listened to the CD? When do you think you could have read the magazine? And make sure you finish with for sure. When do you think you could have watched the video for sure? And when you are asking them, especially about watching or looking at something or reading a magazine, don't suggest a time for them. Let them come up with their own time. So um, the, key, the key is to get the person com um, committed. Saying yes to step four, that's step four is not a commitment of just watching, but ask them when now, when do you think you will have watched? That one will really help you to get that commitment. Then the sixth step is to confirm. So if they say that they will uh, have watched by Tuesday, then ask them. So if I called you on Wednesday morning, will you have watched it for sure? So now it's confirmation. They say they will watch by Tuesday. So ask them, if I called you on Wednesday morning, will you have watched for sure? So this is very, very important because this is where now they confirm to you. It takes them steps to confirm. You know, you are asking, provoking questions that help that these people can confirm. So if they say, I will watch by this date, ask them maybe the following dates. If you call them, will, you, they, will they have watched? Now you will realize that the prospect has agreed three times, you can imagine. So this uh, a confirmation is very, very important. And then I'll get the time and the number. This is very important. 
What is the best number and time for, for me to call you? So if, they, if you ask them, if I call you on Tuesday, will you have watched for sure? Then, or on Wednesday, will you have watched for sure? Then they said yes. So what is the best time for me to call you? That is a very good question. Now you are putting them to task to be able to have done it for sure. So they say, call me at 8 p.m. or 5 p.m. after work. Make sure, put this appointment in a place you will not forget, of course, in your diary. So put it in your diary. Then you, now step eight, and the last step is you get off the phone. If you are calling somebody or if you have finished talking with this person, you are talking one-on-one, -on -one, just leave. If you still hang around, you'll be like telling them, ask me more, ask me more. And so they'll be curious and therefore, you will not go to the next step of even inviting them to a meeting. They will not even watch. So you will be diluting what you told them. So just get off the phone. Remember you are in a hurry, right? So the best thing is something to say is something like this. Great, we'll talk then. I got a run. So these eight steps are so important. We all need to use them. And I'm telling you, if you use this while you are prospecting, remember these are steps. And this is something you can do in less than two minutes, by the way. You don't even have to do it for long, the way I've explained. So they are just uh, building on each other and it will really make you not to stammer or even, you know, so, or even now have to explain so much to the prospect. You are only just asking them questions. So remember the first one, be in a hurry. Number two, compliment the prospect. Number three, make the invitation. And then number four, if I would you, then number five, get a time commitment. Number six, confirm, get a time and number number seven. And then you just get off the phone. That is so important, guys. And um, this one will really ensure that you are doing it right because sometimes we make mistakes, we give people a lot of time and you don't really get them to, to know or even to make them curious. So I have an example, for example, you know, you are in a hurry. First of all, I'll, I'll, I'll read for you one example, maybe just following those steps I've talked about. Hey, I don't have a lot of time to talk, but it was really important I reach you. Listen, you are one of the most financially intelligent people I know, and I've always respected that about you. Then, when you told me you, um, you really don't, didn't like your job, were you serious or were you just kidding around? And of course, you wait for them to answer. They say, yes, I was serious. You say, great, I think I found a way for you to create an exit strategy without jeopardizing your family. I have a CD that you have to listen to or a, or a video on YouTube that you will have to listen to. It describes what I'm talking about better than I can. The, then if I gave you the, the, the YouTube link, would you listen to it? They say yes. So you ask this question, when do you think you could listen to it for sure? They say Tuesday. So if I so you ask them, if I called you on Wednesday morning, you will have listened to it for sure, right? They say yes. All right, I'll check back with you then. What's the best time to call you? They give you the time. What, great. Well, we'll talk then. Got a run and thank you. That is an example. So you just have to, you know, and it also, it's all different for different people. So it, it, you don't have to stick to one script for one person. It's so different. Even when you are talking on the phone, it depends on the other person on the other side. So those are some of the things that you need to consider. But guys, we can prospect. And let me tell you, if you are able to prospect, I tell you that the rest of the steps are not going to be very hard because already you've softened the heart of the prospect. So when they come to you now, they are comfortable. So I want to encourage all of us, let us use the four minute video to be able to prospect. It is so good if you don't have, after this, we are going to send you. Again, Beatrice has already requested for the notes. I will also be able to send upon request, of course, 
So thank you so much, guys. Let us go out and prospect every day. And it is so doable for all of us. We can do it. We can prospect and make sure. Because remember, unless you go through those steps, you are not able to uh, get somebody or get a downline or be able to sponsor in your business. Yet you know that sponsoring is the most important skill in our business. So thank you so much, superstars. I truly appreciate you listening to me. God bless you so much and have a great, great night.